It was summer in 2007, and I took a walk from my parents' home where my family was having dinner. And at the end of their street, I turned the corner, and I walked down to the dead end. And I laid down on the pavement next to a fence at the very end of this dead end, and I truly wanted to die. I was in a job for most of a decade that was crushing me on many levels, uh, but I felt so guilty about the idea of quitting because I felt like I'd let so many people that I cared about down. Uh, but to be honest, I, I had neither the energy to quit nor the will to continue. And I, I honestly, very honestly, had contemplated suicide many times, I, but I'd, I'd been on the other side of, of losing people in that way. And after having been through it, I, I decided that no matter what, no matter how bad things got in life, that uh, I could never assault the lives of people that I really, really cared about uh, with the violence of that loss. So nine months and a whole lot of trauma later, I did quit. And I started a, a web company that I called And Yet. And I gave it that name because those two words are a common combination of uh, uh, of words that very simply describe possibility um, in a very sneaky way. People just sort of see it and think of it as nonsense, but it's it's there. Um, and once you once you see it and once you you hear it, a lot of people that uh, get introduced to the name end up finding it repeated in sentences and it jumps out to them. Um, but it always it's it's always right before some change and some piece of possibility. And since that time, I've I've met and I've, I've worked with some truly just amazing people uh, at our company and, and they're all friends and, and some of them feel like, fa like, like family, as close as, as my own siblings. Amy, who some of you met yesterday, was, uh, uh, was around yesterday and, and flew out this morning. Um, she was actually the first person that, that uh, we hired today and yet, and she's been with us four years now. And uh, she surprised me last week at a, a conference that we... I had in, in uh, Ireland a couple weeks ago called Brio um, when she, she got up kind of in a lightning talk in response to someone sharing and uh, she said she wanted to work at Anyet for 30 years. And I was surprised but honestly knowing Amy and knowing the way that people talk on our team I, I honestly wasn't terribly surprised. I was a little bit embarrassed because we don't really like that's, that's it was just like kind of a very I don't know, it's just, <laughs> it's weird to have somebody say that, I guess. Um, and, uh, and somebody asked me um, a little bit later who, run, who ran a, um, a consulting company, and they said, um, how, do you, how do you bottle that? <laughs> um, and I can't tell you how to bottle it, but I can tell you um, one thing that we try to do um, that is a, a fundamental thing that I feel like everyone should always be trying to do more. Um, and it's simple, and you're probably going to think it's a little bit silly to hear in this context especially, but that's that we talk about our feelings. Um, and that's, that's actually what I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, so it's impossible to look at an iceberg without wondering, especially you know, those of us who, whose heart will go on and on for, you know, whatever, I can't. I have sung that song karaoke before, but I can't remember how it goes right now. Um, <laughs> but it's impossible to look at an iceberg without thinking about Titanic and like you know this big thing that's underneath. That's like the it's like the only thing that everybody knows about icebergs, really. Like there's there's more underneath, right? So um, it, it you you end up looking at a picture of an iceberg and you're like, I wonder what's underneath the surface, and and that same question applies to each of us. What's going on under the surface? We don't talk enough about our feelings, and so that's what I'm going to do right now. But wait, says the straw man I'm using for the purpose of making my next point. <laughs> we are engineers and scientists. Why are we talking about feelings? All right, let's talk about science for a minute. 
uh, asterisk, uh, high level outdated hand wavy science. So there's that. Uh, so there's this guy named Paul McLean who, uh, like a while ago, like 60s or something, uh, came up with this triune brain theory. Uh, and it basically, it's it's an over, oversimplification. It's not necessarily wrong, but it's uh, the it's somewhat modernized. And it's quite quite simple, but it's uh, for the purpose of what we're talking about, it's um, it's useful. Um, so. Basically, he looks at he's looking at the brain from the standpoint of evolution, and uh, and he looks at it from the point of development in um, of evolutionary function of the brain. Um, so he has these three sort of hence triune. Um, he has these three sort of areas of the brain uh, that kind of control these different you know different pieces of our human experience as far as our minds work. So the reptile brain, which Many of you have heard these things, but so there's a reptile brain, which is survival, which is fight and flight, and uh, most recently they've sort of also called this uh, it's fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, I know that of the two, I'm actually more likely to freeze rather than fight or flight. And so when I remember reading some uh, scientific article talking about this, I was like, oh, that's why I'm not fighting or flying. I'm just freezing because it's a now there's, they put another F in the brain. Science, everyone. There's more Fs in our brain than we thought. <laughs> um, yeah. Oversimplifications are useful for actually having reasonable conversations. Um, so uh, then there's the limbic, which is sort of our emotions and our values. And this sort of developed uh, in mammals was sort of his, his, his theory that you know, this was something that uh, the, the mammals who actually cared for their young had this attachment and had these sort of, this is the way that we do things, um, and and then that carries on to us that in our emotions and our values that that they're there, um, and then the neocortex is the thoughts and imagination um, that we're everything that we've had conversation about in this entire conference is in the neocortex, which is all some of the latest pieces of our brain to develop um, evolu from an evolutionary standpoint. Um, so my favorite thing in this picture is this item because <laughs> I stole it from the internet and I found it on someone's notes in this biology, bio, biology thing and if this is actually in the image, unknown internet source will find later. I just, I don't know, it's great. So um, really what you have is you're talking about the underlying OS here. Um, and here you're talking about our feelings and values and this is our, our thoughts and our work. So the reptile brain um, is because it's our, our fight and flight and freeze, it's all of our instincts, it's all of uh, the, the, the parts of our brain that control um, breathing and heart rate and temperature and um, all the things that keep us alive. Uh, it's, it's got the control. Uh, and it has immense control over how we experience reality. So, you know, shit happens and all of a sudden, you know, when for like the second time, we have the, uh, the the massive feedback on the microphone, um, at which you know I'm like having a fight, flight, and freeze response simultaneously, um, <laughs> right? Like we all just go Ugh! like there's that just like we we aren't sitting here having a rational like you know what it'd be really good to just sort of freak out right now. <laughs> no, there's someone else who's in charge, and that's the reptile brain, um, and that happens to all of us. You know we. We come into some major problem. You're coming up to a deadline, and you've got some code that you've got to ship. You've got a project. You've got a client. You have a boss. Somebody who's hammering on you that wants this done. And there's you know piles of money behind it, and maybe your job, and maybe your livelihood. And so you just have this intense survival instinct kick in, and it's driving everything. It doesn't matter that you can like rationally go, well, you know, really, like, no, it's it's driving. Uh, and so then you've got kind of on, on the level just above that in terms of control, uh, uh, you've got our feelings and values, things that you know, feel really strongly about these things. And I have, this, you know, I have this attachment to these people, and I want to make sure that they're cared for and that they're taken care of. And these are things that I hold really true to myself. But, um, but then all above, above that is where we actually do our work. Um, so, so when we're doing work in the neocortex, it, it actually really matters what's going on beneath the surface. Um, now you can you can get work done. Things 
things can be made to happen uh, when when you're experiencing uh, you know some immense amount of stress or panic uh, or a lot of anxiety or fear, but it's not anywhere near um, what we're capable of. It's not at our best. So, what what is it like? I mean. It, what is it like when you try and write uh, when you try and write code or do design and you're just having a, a horrible day emotionally, which could be from any number of uh, of places? I think that I think most most of us would agree that we really feel worthless, and that most of the times, if we were truly honest, we would probably say it's best for me just to step away from the keyboard and do something different rather than just write more bugs. Um, so it, it it bypasses. Like our ability to be creative, it 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 keeps us uh, it it keeps us in a mode that's not not useful. Um, I I really think the work of software just in general is is that of uh, of an artist at you know different different levels of art. Um, and artists are notoriously emotional people, uh, and from my experience, so are so are software developers. Um, artists create from their feelings, but they they have an easier time harnessing them. Uh, because unfortunately, the the functions of of an artist's work aren't necessarily as completely tied uh, to um, making a, a compiler happy or having you know having code actually execute. Um, and unfortunately, there's um, there's no emo software. Like maybe there should be. It, like most of it wouldn't run, unfortunately. But <laughs> like I think. I think like there should just be emo software, and people are like, man, I ran this really great emo software the other day, and didn't run actually. So all emo software is basically the same; it just doesn't really work. Um, but this is actually why I can't I can't stand managers who use fear as a motivation tactic, because um, it it may actually prove some short term results, um, but long term it's actually one of the most destructive things that I can imagine someone doing. Uh, if so, if you're responsible for pe people, and if you work with any other people, I don't care if your title is a manager. You are responsible for people, uh, and and in my mind, if you do, it is your job to help the people around you feel better. It is your job to help them feel great about what they're doing, to help them feel empowered, to help them feel encouraged, to help them feel like they're on the right track, to help them know when they're not and how to get back there, to help give them feedback. Um, because all of us have really shitty software that we have, you know, things that that pop into our own minds. It's just negative self-talk that's destructive, that's that's wrong, and we need people around us to help us feel better. So managers that you know that that work in a way of like adding new problems that you know that create this sort of fight or flight feeling. Um, they're they're doing they're doing an immense amount of disservice, not just to um, to the people that that uh, they're entrusted with, but also to um, to the project in general. Um, if people are if people are feeling good, I find that that they do their best work. Um, they use their full mind, and they're open to the most amount of creative possibility. Um, when we're when we're panicked, we basically just shut out of creative mode. Um, we and I, I really think that uh, technical debt can be a symptom of emotional debt. That when you have a lot of problems, whether that's personal um, or whether that's because of the stress of completing a project, um, or uh, you know, for any number of reasons, that that can actually be um, a a big piece of uh, of what ends up l making a project lag and and uh, end up being less than it can be. Um, so we need to take feelings very seriously. Uh, most most everyone that you know has had some kind of uh, of, of personal tragedy. It, 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 many people here. Uh, or you know, world-bending stress of some kind within uh, within the last few years, really uh, jarring things. Uh, you know, I, I know that those things have happened within my life in the last couple of years, and and for for many of you, it has they have as well. I mean, I don't even need to list them because to some extent, it's sort of rehearsing those pains. But it's actually not just the big things. It's it's. The stupid shit can be big shit. Like the things that the things that just kind of nag at us and just eat away at us and and bring us down. We need to actually treat those as 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 serious things. Um, we we don't need to compare war wounds by any stretch. Um, it's really easy to sort of uh, you know 
someone who's having a really tough day and go, well, that's not really that big of a problem. Um, I, I love this line, which is often misattributed to Plato, who's like 1,900 years before this quote. Uh, but be kind, everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle is so true. Is there anybody here that's like, yeah, my life's pretty awesome. I don't really have problems. I don't know what these feelings are that you're talking about. Uh, so just, just yawn. That's it. OK, all right, well, a couple. All right, cool. This is great. You guys, you guys can save us all. Uh, but seriously, we, we're, we're, easily, we're easily overwhelmed by so many different things, and it's, and it's, it's, um, it's unfortunate the amount of times that we uh, sort of say, well, that, I don't know why they're having a problem. It's not that big of a deal, um, because we've all been there. I have no idea what my next slide is, so I'm going to go there. Yeah, okay, so here's, here's another thought. Um, who, worries, who worries that they'll be exposed as a fraud? Honestly, please, like, please, if you, if this is ever a thought that you have, please raise your hand. This is a genuine, this is a genuine question. I would actually say that so many, uh, so many people um, that I looked, that I look up to and uh, and respect, as I've gotten to know them, I've found out that that's one of their most significant fears. Um, that, that people, there are people that I, I had waited years to finally get to speak to, and and as I got to know them, I, I found out that. They, they had the same amount of self-doubt, the same amount of uh, self-criticism, uh, the, the same just humanness uh, that I do, that the people that I know and love do. Um, your heroes are, are all afraid too. So incidentally, this is this reason is actually one of the one one of the reasons why I believe so strongly in uh, in encouragement and believe that that people need to do more of it more actively with the people that that are in their lives, um, especially the people who you have the ability to influence and who whose ear you have. Um, sometimes all it takes for great things to happen is is somebody else to stand alongside you and encourage you and tell you no, you should do this thing that you want to do. I believe that you can do it. Of course you can do it. Um, many, many of the best things that, that I've had happen in my life um, and have been a part of making happen were because someone, someone said, yeah, you should do that. You can do that. Um, and I've, and I, it's, it's an absolute privilege. I mean, I can't actually describe how amazing it is to get to be in that spot for someone else, to be able to say, you should do this. You can do this. I believe in you. And see them go and do it. That, it's amazing. It, it feels like magic. It feels like you're just creating some crazy incantation over them, and now they've gone and, and, and done something. Um, so do it. it it's, it's, it's powerful. Um, so in terms, of, in terms of the practical, um, so here are some things that we can do. So for one thing, do something physical. I, I know that you know, it's, it's easy when you're in a mode of, being overwhelmed, being stressed, it's really easy just to stay focused on the problem. Um, doing something physical is, and removing yourself from it is huge. Um, I can't say enough about our need to vent and rant. We, we really need to, you know, the, 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 those feelings which are basically just piles of uh, adrenaline and all kinds of other hormones is dumped into us at, at, at those response moments, um, which I was, I've, I've been so, so amazed that, uh, Christine and uh, and and James at like having that panic, that the panic of the speaker going off, and then them going up and delivering like an outstanding talk, like that was incredible. Um, but that's that's a very very hard thing to do. There's a ton of there's there's a ton just bound up in there that we have to release, and being able to to just express it personally um, goes a very long ways. Um, Giving yourself space is huge. Taking time is huge. Uh, listening to music, traveling, being with friends. Um, stop. Just take time and stop. And give yourself an outlet. Make art, play music, write, travel. Um, gratitude is immensely huge. I, 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 love, I love what... Uh, what Jan said, probably 
uh, probably half a dozen times that I've heard him say within the last uh, six months now. Um, but the notion that we are so incredibly, uh, incredibly blessed that we, we have we have in just more power, more freedom than so many people in our world do right now. Um, and if we just stop and think about what we have and start with the people that that we know, um, it's amazing how how much of a difference that can make. Um, and giving back, you know, when we when we're focused on ourselves, uh, it's very easy to uh, just be stuck in a cycle of coming back to ourselves and and coming back to that anxiety and instead of uh, instead of finding a, a way to release it, going and finding someone else to encourage, um, going and finding a way to to help. I love the several programs that have been discussed uh, here uh, this this week that uh, are using what is the incredible privilege that this group has been given of being able to do a, you know do a career that is continuing to grow uh, and is taking over the entire world, being able to empower uh, you know the next generation to to have some of the advantages that many of us did of growing up alongside the um, computer revolution and sort of learning as we went. Um, so giving back. So one other thing that I wanted to add is it's important to be with people. Negative feelings are amplified by a vacuum and positive, <clears throat> positive feelings are multiplied by a group. So don't, don't be alone. When you, feel, when you feel that way, don't be alone. Because you're not alone. So many people, when those feel, the feelings that you've had, when you just feel like, I'm alone in this feeling, dozens and dozens and dozens of people that you know have felt those same things. And talk. I, I was talking to a friend in, in Ireland, and we were having this entire conversation about the difference between um, uh, people in Ireland and, and people in the US. Uh, it's probably the same for uh, several areas within, within Europe. But people in the US, we talk about our feelings. Like We're much more willing to talk about our feelings um, than, than people, at least in Ireland, based on this discussion. Uh, but that's not it's not necessarily easy. Um, but uh, and and it's not necessarily always always useful. But for me, I find that actually talking about them is is quite hard. But writing them is much easier, which is the only reason I'm actually able to do this because I wrote this stuff down like while I was while I was sitting and was quiet. But uh, then had the opportunity to you know now say what I wrote. So it's sort of like this weird hack thing. Um, but you you need people in your life who will listen to you rant and be honest that you can go to and you can say, this is what I'm feeling, and it sucks. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And it's amazing to me, when, when I have that feeling, and I go to somebody and speak to them, how much of it just starts to go, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Actually, by the time I'm done ranting, I'm like, ah, you know, I, it's, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. Uh, we, we tell people on our team at Anyet to complain early and often, and I believe that it's actually really, really useful to be sensitive and, and to, to have uh, almost an oversensitivity to certain things because you end, up, you end up saying more of your opinions. And sometimes having the opportunity to say opinions is what creates the opportunity for connections and discussions that, uh, that lead to improving everything that you're working on and everything that you're doing. Um, so, I mean, the other, and the other piece that goes alongside it when you're working with people is... Um, is that there's uh, there's a tendency in uh, in in dealing with people that when when we have something that's left unsaid, people can feel it. Do you know that eggshell feeling when you when you have you know that there's something that's there and they're not saying it, but we're just we're just going to talk about this other thing and be a little bit uncomfortable in this conversation instead. Um, and ultimately, those sorts of situations can actually create resentment. Uh, I didn't get to say this, or uh, I know there's some. I know they're mad at me about something. Simply, ha simply opening those communication channels and saying those things goes a very, very long way. Um, and the better, it's much better to say it and then work through the mess of having to apologize and and clean up a bit of the mess 
uh, than to leave things unsaid and, and not, not do them. Now, the important thing is that that's very different online. Um, it's very easy for us to very vehemently express our opinions online um, and not really think about the fact that, that, uh, that people maybe uh, are not going to receive them with the same, uh, same mindset that we're, we're delivering them. Um, but <laughs> uh, in terms of in person with people, I think it's important to uh, be quite, quite honest. Um, so one of the other things that we do uh, is that actually, to me, is one of, the, one of the biggest things we've really learned in the last few years um, in talking about our feelings is we have, so how many people do on your team have some sort of either uh, a scrum or you write a daily check-in of some sort saying like, this is what I did today, anybody? Most people, right? So we do a daily check-in, um, but our daily check-in is a question that's a little bit different um, for uh, more than anything because we're kind of working on a lot of different projects, so we have discussion on those projects in different, different scenarios. But in terms of our daily check-in, um, the question is just, how is your day? And we ask people to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. And, uh, and, and then to say, you know, why, and, and then to just say whatever's on their mind. Uh, there are times that we will get, someone will write, you know, like 20 paragraphs of like, here's what happened, and here's why I'm, here's why I'm really frustrated, and here's why today was, you know, a 3, and, you know, I had this horrible thing happen. Um, there have been days that people have written zero. My, you know, my spouse left me. Um, there have been days that people have have uh, you know have have described and, and things that I've come to learn and understand just simply by being with these with these people and having the opportunity to hear them. Um, really understanding on a day to day basis what it's like to be a, a single parent um, trying to work a full time job. Um, knowing and understanding that on a day-to-day -day basis gives me an immense amount of, of ability to go, okay, we need to help this person and we can be a little more flexible on these things because it will make their life so much better. But if you don't talk about that stuff, you, have, you don't even have the opportunity um, to, to, to do anything helpful. Um, so one of the other things in our, in our check-ins is uh, that really kind of stood out to me is we don't we don't enforce them in any way and so there are times that like I'm I while while I've been over here I've been just noto just notoriously horrible uh, for doing my check-ins but typically uh, one of the things that we noticed is that when people go a very long time without writing one uh, the end at the end of that period they, they ch they'll check in and they say I've been really really depressed lately and I've had a lot of anxiety or you know, I've had this big problem. And so we find out that when someone's silent for a long period of time, we go, okay, maybe we need to check in on this person, find out what's really going on, um, and ask them, how are you really doing? And then this is, this is the key, and I think that this is probably as big as anything else, and that's to listen. It's to listen and to be silent. It's really tempting. It's really tempting when someone comes to tell us about a problem to want to fix it. It's really tempting to be like, let's see what we can do about this. I can help you. Um, but sometimes we just need to listen. And that's a hard, hard thing to do, but it's incredibly useful. Sometimes we just need to be there so someone can rant and work through their stuff. Unfortunately, you can't as easily rubber duck your emotions. You really need a human who can say, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Why are you feeling this? Help me understand this. Okay, but you're actually really good at this. Why are you beating yourself up about this? Um, and how awesome it is when we don't have to be alone in those feelings. And then celebrate stuff. Find reasons with the people that you are with to just enjoy company. Be with them. Um, we, 
we do completely ridiculous things. I'm sure many of you do uh, all kinds of things to just celebrate with the people that, that you care about. And our, on our team, we, we'll just play ridiculous songs, make, pe make people march around the office when they do something really great. Um, but uh, you know, we, we built a rocket into our app that shoots off and makes a rocket noise whenever people ship, just simply for the celebration of it. Um, but the important thing that I really want to drive home is that feelings are powerful. And instead of fearing them, we should use them. We shouldn't run away from them. We shouldn't try to suppress them. We should use them. Uh, perhaps the most empowering thing that, that I've ever discovered is that you can ultimately choose to take charge of, of what happens with your emotional energy. It's not necessarily like an instant thing. Um, uh, setting aside true tra tragedies, I, I believe that we feel some of our most overwhelming emotions right before the moment we have the chance to come to some new clarity or, uh, or inspiration or a new direction. Um, and you can change whatever situation you're in. Ultimately, we have an incredible amount of power over what it is that we feel, what it is that we think, and we have more influence than we know around the lives of the people around us. So that, that dead end where I laid down on the cement, I, I actually walk by it now almost every day because it's not a dead end anymore. Um, we, we built a house in a development that ended up being on the street where that dead end was. And every time I go by there, I'm reminded that it doesn't matter how bad or how tough things are, that there's something completely different that's out there and that can be opened up at any minute. And that is one of the most amazing things. When you stop what you're thinking and you realize that right now, I can actually change everything. I can actually say, nope. I'm not going to do this anymore. Nope, I'm not going to do it this way anymore. Nope, I'm not going to accept that opinion about myself that I'm talking to myself about. About something. <laughs> anyway, we have more power than we know. And I really just want to encourage all of you to tap into your feelings instead of running away from them. Share them. Use them. So now, please help me thank Julian with some wild applause.